Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and welcome to part 16 of our series on making a custom character controller in Unity. In this video, we're going to kind of expand on our interaction action and create an attack action, which is a very similar idea, but it's going to pass in a little bit more information. And instead of just saying, oh, I'm colliding with you, therefore I'm interacting with you, we're going to pass in, in this case, like some damage information to say you're going to take this much damage from this attack. But it's basically, it expresses this idea of being able to pass parameters in addition to simply the collision action. So, in order to do this, we're going to have to make a few modifications to our um, walking controller first. So I'm going to open this up in Mono Develop. I'll zoom in a little bit here. And in our settings, I'm going to add a new setting called Public Float Attack Damage. And we'll set that equal to 5. And this is simply, this would probably be something that you would have maybe even in another component or stored in a weapon or something. Um, but for now, we're just going to put it right into the walking controller. In addition, we want to change up our hitbox. Right now, our hitbox is just set for this kind of interact action. We're going to want to make a, sec um, a separate way for it to detect things that can be attacked. So we're going to jump back over into Unity. And in our player hitbox here, we see that we've got this layer hitbox and layer interact target. We're going to add something similar for um, attacking and for attack targets. So I'm going to click Add Layer. And down here, Layer 10 is now going to be called Player Attack. And Layer 11 is going to be Attack Target. Remember, we're going to want to know this um, Layer 10 and Layer 11 here for when we're setting the um, physics layers of our targets later on. So with those added there, I'm going to change this from the hitboxes layer from player hitbox now to player attack because this is now going to represent an attack action. In addition, we're going to create, like we have our interact sphere, we're going to create a um, target that we can attack. So I'm going to go up to game object. I'm going to create a, we'll create a cylinder for this one. And we will call it attack dummy. I'm going to reset its transform and then I'll kind of bring it up forward here and maybe a little bit over to the left. Um, let's see here, is that sticking through? Yeah, we can pull that up a little bit. There we go. So that will be our, um, that will be the object that we'll be attacking. We are again not going to change its layer up here because we're going to want to do that in the um, attack target script so that we know for certain if we're detecting a collision, we know it's something that we can attack. But we are going to create a couple more things here. We're going to create a material. Create a material. I'm going to call this attackable material. And I'm going to drag that onto the attack dummy. In addition, I'm going to go to our model scripts and like we have our interact object, I'm going to create a C-sharp script and call this attackable object. Likewise, we're going to drag that onto our attack dummy. So we have that here as one of the components, similar to how our interact sphere has the interact object component. Now, Let's jump into that attackable object script over in MonoDevelop. And we're actually going to open up as well the interact object because these are going to work in kind of a similar way. In the way that our interact object had a material we tracked and we just changed the color of it, we're going to do something similar but add a little bit more because we're going we're to have a um, certain number of hit points on this object and it's going to track how many um, it's losing as we attack it. So. For this, we are going to put in a material called mat again. I'm also going to have a float called total HP and a float called current HP. And I'm actually going to make the total HP equal to, we'll say 50 here. Um, you'd probably, you could make this public and then change it in the inspector if you wanted to. And lastly, I'm going to add what's a, called a public gradient. And we're just going to call this 
HP color. And that's going to be responsible for, um, we're going to apply a color to our material based on what its hit point level is. It's a way for us to track and see that it's actually being changed. So our start function here, uh, first thing we're going to want to do is set, similar to how in our interact object we set our layer to number 9. This is going to be number 11 because it's the attackable. So we're going to say game object dot layer equals 11. We're also going to um, set a reference to our material. So we'll say material equals get component met, uh, mesh renderer dot material. And we're going to set our current HP equal to our total HP. So it starts out at full health. And lastly, we're going to, we want to make sure that once we start our game, our, um, our object is reflecting that full health color. So I'm going to call a script that we, or a function we haven't written yet, but I'm going to call it adjust color. And we can delete the update function. Now we're going to create a void adjust color function here. And all this is going to be responsible for doing is going to say that the materials color should equal, and then we're going to look at that gradient color we've created, and we're going to do what's called evaluate. And evaluate basically takes a number between 0 and 1, and says whatever that number is, if it's half, it's, I'm going to take the color at the exact half. 0 and 1 would be either end of the gradient. Um, basically, it's kind of almost like a lerp, but for colors. So we're going to say evaluate, and we're going to check our current HP divided by the total HP. And so that will give us the color we should be given our the current health of this attackable object. Lastly, we are going to have a public function similar to how interact told our interactable object to take or to change color this is going to actually tell it to take that damage so we're going to say public void um, take damage and it's going to pass in a float called damage and in here what we're going to do is we're going to say current HP minus equals damage now this could potentially take us below zero, which we don't want, um, at least in this particular example. So we are going to quickly say as well, current HP equals mathf dot max, and we're going to pass in current HP and zero. So that if it does happen, to, this basically says if current HP is below zero, then it's going to take zero, which is the higher value. Otherwise, it'll just stay at current HP. And then finally, we'll tell this to adjust color based on that um, current HP again. So this is everything that our attackable object needs. Lastly, what we need to do is we need to be able to tell our um, walking controller when we hit our attack button we want to activate our player hitbox and detect if there's something that can be attacked and attack it. So similar to how we have this system to check is the interact button being pressed we can do the same thing for our attack button. So I'm going to actually copy all this in our walking controller. I'm going to paste it here and I'm going to quickly change this note to check if the attack button is being pressed. And that's going to be uh, button number 2, or index 2 I should say. If that equals true, on interact is null. Now here's where this gets a little bit tricky. The problem we have is that on interact is passing in this interact duration, which then tells our player hitbox that it should activate itself and for that duration stay active, but it what our hitbox doesn't know at this point is what damage it should be passing. So we need to actually kind of refigure our on interact um, delegate to say in addition to a duration that you should be active, we're going to pass in, we, we have the opportunity at least to pass in some additional information. So what I'm going to do, so I'm going to kind of work this backwards here. I'm going to create in addition to our duration of our collider, I'm going to create a 
secondary um, float value. And the reason I'm calling it this and not just damage is that you could use this information for other things. You could you could put in, say, even in your interact check, you could put in like a skill check. You know, your player rolls to see if it can pick a lock. It, you know, rolls a 10, and then you can pass in that 10 to the interact function and say, does he successfully pick the lock? There's more, there's more use to this than just simply um, attacking and damage, but that's the kind of example we're going to go with right now. So I'm going to say float secondary. And then down here in our um, start collision check, I'm going to have a float. And I'm just going to call it sec here. And then secondary is going to be equal to that sec that we pass. Now, remember this kind of creates a conflict now because this is a function that takes two parameters and our oninteract delegate only has one parameter so we need to be sure to fix that. So we jump back over to our walking controller and up here where we have our delegate hitbox event handler we're going to add a second float and I'll call it secondary again because that's kind of the name we're using. So finally what we can do now is we can say public delegate void um, because we're saying public delegate void we need these two we need to pass in two floats down here we can say interact duration and then for our second float we can pass in our attack damage float so now when we press the attack button we're passing on interact interact duration and the attack damage information now we do also need to pass in something up here, however because there isn't an, our interacting um, function on our interactable objects doesn't really care about the value, we'll just pass in zero, And but you could really put in any garbage value you want here. So what now happens is when we press the attack button, we call on interact letting our hitbox know that it should be, um, that there's this duration value and this attack value our player hitbox activates with the collision check and the um, secondary check getting, the, getting those values in there but now what we need to do is where we're saying on trigger enter currently we're just if there's something that can be um, collided with we're interacting with it we're going to comment this out for now because we're no longer dealing with um, objects that have an interact object. Now we're dealing with, because of our new um, layer that we're on, we're dealing with attackable objects. So we're going to do something similar, but slightly different. We're going to say collide, collider, get component, attackable object, dot, and down here we should have take damage. And remember that take damage takes in the float, which we've conveniently set here as our secondary value so we can say take damage secondary so now we, what we're doing we're pressing the button passing in both the duration and that secondary value which in this case is damage and we're able to tell the attackable object that it should take that damage so we'll save this here save our scene and we do want to quickly also, I, right now our um, color, color gradient is just white all over. So we're going to change that quickly. We're going to say at 0 we want it to turn completely red. But at 1, the value of 1, we're going to make it turn completely green. And in between it will kind of hit this ugly middle color. So we'll close that, save this, and now what we should see, first off, when we hit play, this attack dummies layer will become the attackable object, or attack, attack target rather. Changes to green because it's completely healthy. Now we can move our character down and over here, and now when we hit our secondary button, which is X, we see that it starts to take some damage. Now we are getting an object reference error here. So let's find out what that's about. 
Collider, get component. It's not set to an instance of an object. That's a little bizarre because it's it's clearly working. We are you know changing the color here. However, it is giving us this error every time we attack with it. So that is something I will do a little bit of research on and confirm why that is um, being the case and what issues that is causing. Now, obviously the other issue we have right now is that if I walk over to this, um, this sphere here now and I try and um, attack it, it does not work. You know what, in fact, I know exactly why this is happening now that I think about it because this is now giving us even more um, collisions. And that is because we did not set our layer like we did with the interact layer. You'll recall on the interact layer we set it so that, actually I'll jump to that. If we go back to project settings physics, our player hitbox um, layer could only interact <clears throat> with interact targets. In fact, I should check off these so it's not interacting with um, the attack stuff. Likewise, we need to do the same thing with the player attack um, hitbox. We want to make sure that it's not interacting with things like water UI or defaults. You know, we don't want to be attacking obstacles that can't be damaged. So we want to make sure that that's only being inter only interacting with the attack target. So that should cover everything we need here. And the attack target can still interact with stuff except for the player hitbox. Okay, so that will work. Now when we hit play, we should see that this takes the damage. No errors are coming up now because we're no longer colliding with the ground like we were. As it takes damage, it becomes more and more red because its health is going down and down and down towards zero. But the problem I was mentioning before is that now when we try to interact with the interactable sphere, nothing is happening and that's because we've hard coded right now and said that the hitbox is only an attack hitbox. It's not an interact hitbox anymore. So in our next video what we're going to do is we're actually going to um, jump into the code for a little bit longer and say can we change, depending on which button we're hitting, let's change that layer so that the hitbox is able to interact when it should or attack when it should and not worry um, about having to, say, do something like create two hitboxes, but just have it intelligently know what button we're hitting. From there, that's actually going to wrap up the walking controller part of this series, and then we're going to get into um, jumping into a vehicle, which we'll actually be able to do with our interact action, um, as well as achieving flight at the end of this series. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.